Chat, chat, chat. Ah, uh, yeah, what's up, everyone? Welcome to Film Filmspiration. My name is writer, director, Red Rivera. Let's get down to business. So I woke up on Thursday morning, banged out some emails, and then it was off to work. All right, so after editing and doing a few other things this morning, I hit the road and I'm actually here on the border town of Nogales, Arizona. You can kind of see, there's the border wall right there behind me. And um, let me see if I can go over here and turn around. We're, we're going to do a little uh, thing right now with the camera. Uh, it's called the stand up when the reporter, you know, basically comes out on air. So we're kind of up top. We're doing a story about uh, the city and what the city of Nogales uh, is doing. Nogales. Arizona is the southernmost city in Arizona, and, um, just below Tucson, uh, on the border. And so there, um, you know, coronavirus stuff, of course. Just want to make sure you can hear me. But here's the uh, here's the gear. So a little bit of uh, of the day as I bring out my uh, my camera. So yeah. Um, Lots of uh, fun times here on the border. Always neat to tell the stories, but you gotta be, it goes back to what I'm always saying. You have to be passionate about the storytelling. You have to be passionate about telling a good, accurate story that gives people a really good clue as to, you know, from the point of journalism, uh, with regards to like what's going on around you. And so that's one of the aspects that I love. So anyway, there's the border one more time. And camera's all loaded up on the tripod. I'm ready to go here at the board. And let me see if I can zoom in on this for you guys. So that's the uh, the famous border here in Arizona that separates Arizona, uh, Nogales, Arizona, from Nogales, same name of the city, but on the Mexican side, it's the Mexican state of Sonora. Yep, there you go. So let's grab the camera, let's film some stuff. So as to not edit, we always edit at this one restaurant. Let me go ahead and show you called Las Vegas here in Nogales, Arizona, except I don't know if because of the coronavirus or not, but they're actually closed. And so that was our regular editing spot. So I'm gonna transfer a bunch of the video that we just shot for today's story onto my laptop here and still be productive, still keep on moving forward to produce tonight's news pieces for six o'clock and 10 p.m. And oftentimes when you are chasing the story, you'll find that your office with your gear right there in the back, there's the laptop. Your office many times is gonna be some parking lot. Um, and guess what? When you're mobile, it doesn't matter. What matters more is okay, when you have the tools and the resources, are you gonna be able to get the job done? The hope is yeah, you, you need to get the job done. You need to tell that story um, using the technology that you have at your disposal. And so that's why, you know, that's why I'm a big believer in like, you know, even if you're, you know, like I'm filming this on my, on my personal iPhone right now. Um, but, you know, still, even with the most basic stories, it, it does matter to have the good basic gear. But what matters more is, okay, what are you doing with that gear? What kind of story are you telling? Are you telling me something interesting? You know, same thing goes for filmmaking, so. All right, very cool. Uh, stuff's being loaded up into the editing system and so we'll just give that a moment. Here's one of the greatest lessons that I've ever been able to take away from being a photojournalist for almost 17 years now. You have to be flexible in your storytelling abilities. Um, you have to get your job done. I'm, I'm very proud of the fact that I always get my job done. Uh, yes, there have been times in the past when that hasn't been the case for this logistical reason or that logistical reason, but for the most part you have to get your job done. and. Um, you have to be open and flexible to you know to any situation around you because you have to be able to like look for the stories around you in the world around you in the case of today it's um what's going on with the coronavirus is there coronavirus in the santa cruz county which is the county uh below pima county uh below tucson so we're basically in a border community um just above the mexican state of sonora 
and you know it you have to be flexible in, in in where you go what you do because you have to follow the story to see where the story's at and you have to be able to look for that story um, and decide okay here's what's going on this is what I found this is the story and report on that story so and you know it's a uh, it's a really cool part of the whole thing that I love is uh, the story aspect it's got to be about story same thing goes with filmmaking um, but yeah it definitely has to be about story and um, and the power of that story all right so plans change a little bit now we're gonna drive back to Tucson and uh, basically find a spot to park over there and uh, get the news story done so anyway talk to you guys later see you in the main video bye so ironically enough a few hours after we came back from Santa Cruz County the County Health Department put out that they then officially had their one first case of uh, coronavirus infection within that county um, and so it's that's how fast things change when we were there everything was um, well they were they were declaring that they had no recorded cases and that changed literally within a few hours so um, came back of course handled two stories for the six o'clock then ten o'clock news if you want to check out those stories I will go ahead and put the links for you in the description of this video but that was Thursday it's now Saturday and um, I hope you are all uh, taking care and following the, the proper precautions that we're being asked to washing your hands staying indoors staying away from crowded places like you know your mall movie theaters I know are closed etc like just just self-isolate now that doesn't mean that you do nothing um, uh, for example you know I've been busy here at the house all morning and then later on uh, wife and I are gonna be going to take a hike that's what, that sounds funny when you say it. We're actually going to be taking a hike, um, one of our local hikes not too far away from the house, to get out and get air, sunshine, and exercise. So I highly, you know, because we're being asked to socially isolate does not mean that you let your body turn to mush. Like, still get out there, still enjoy the sunlight, get some vitamin D, all that good stuff, right? But the thing is that if you don't well let me let me talk about the other thing too also I'm also seeing a surge of great positive creativity and, and creative things that are coming out of the space now I'm not saying the coronavirus is a good thing in our lives it's not and my heart goes out to everyone affected uh, by somebody who's been infected or if you've been infected or you know there are also people even passing away um, my heart does go out to these people and those affected by um, you know very closely by the corona virus but you still have to push on you still have to push on in life because this is not a, a situation where I want you to look at it as like okay the world's ending and that's it like you can't see it that way because we've been through worse as a country collectively and so you have to move forward you have to push on and so back to filmmaking I'm seeing that translate into you know people like a, one filmmakers like hey I'm thinking like in one of the groups that I belong to on Facebook hey I'm thinking about doing a coronavirus movie or or something of that nature how much like he straight up asked like how much would you be willing to pay if I you know put this movie out there for sale and you know some people said you know um, you know they wouldn't pay anything I said somewhere between one to three dollars I think is fair other people said five other people said ten so um, that's my two cents but here's the thing if that filmmaker is gonna get creative in his home uh, I think he he might have some kids uh, then you know what I say to that I say power to him power to him for taking the situation and doing something with it and harnessing with it, harnessing it versus allowing for it to harness him um, you can't be scared of the situation it's a balance between doing everything the doctors and you know the health officials tell us to do which is wash our hands stay away from people all that good stuff right um, does not mean go ape shit at the grocery store please don't do that stop doing that there are elderly people who need supplies too at the grocery store who can't fend for themselves or probably not as well as the rest of us younger folks there are people with babies you know there are people with very young kids that they have to watch out after you guys don't don't whore, don't go ape shit. Okay, I'll just say that word, I'll use that word. Uh, don't do that. 
but you know do 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 everything that you need to do on one hand to to take care of yourself but on the other hand move forward in life in this new normal okay uh staying away from people etc right it doesn't mean life stops it means you alter life for you know in these certain ways for a little while hopefully it's just a little while until necessary um but you still move forward and you still bang out that script and you still you know do that thing um that that you want to do like that short film or in my case i have to you know the the editing continues the editing continues and so but you can't do that you can't do any of that you can't and i'm happy to see this flow of creativity like this other guy I saw on youtube i was coming home i think on i think that day on thursday or or on yesterday friday i saw a guy on on in one of the facebook groups drop a youtube video asking the question could self-isolation be a good thing for filmmakers heck yeah it could be a good thing i responded right away this is what i responded heck yeah it could be a good thing because that means more time for reflection more time for strategizing whiteboarding drawing out your plan um maybe getting creative and learning to once again let me see if i can brighten this light there you go learning to once again be creative of a very resourceful nature in other words aka with like very little resources but yeah self-isolation can be a very good thing and you know, for a lot of creative people out there who, you know, maybe see themselves more on kind of like in, in as far as personalities go more of like a loner or the lone wolf or, or, you know, just maybe somebody who's more of a, of a, um, yeah, oh my God, the, the word is escaping me right now. Uh, somebody who spends more time on the inside of themselves versus the outside. Um, my Jesus. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> I'll, I'll reset, uh, an introvert, an introvert, you know, like self-isolation to, to somebody like that, you guys, it's nothing new. You know, I, when, when, when I got severely bullied in the, uh, sixth and seventh grade and, you know, into the eighth grade and I, I really severely disconnected from the rest of the world. That's when my interest in writing and, um, it, a few years after that and early in high school, my interest in developing, um, skills with my dad's video camera came out like that's when you spend time with yourself um, to really just be there with yourself and think about about who you are what you do what you like to do what you're good at what you're not good at what your strengths are what your weaknesses are and then playing to your strengths that's like when you do that you really figure out a lot of who you are and then based upon that what direction you want to go in and so that's why i was able to find out how i just naturally gravitated toward cameras toward editing systems toward creating stories and telling stories through uh the the, the visual format um starting with my dad's 1990 panasonic camera that he bought for my that he bought for my sister's eighth grade graduation um Self-isolation can be a very good thing. And again, to like a lot of us loners or, you know, if you identify as such, I, I definitely do in, in, in the sense of, you know, spending a lot of time alone with my creativity as I edit and whatnot. It could definitely be a good thing. But back to the health aspect, you got to take care of yourself. You got to take care of yourself. And so like, let me give you guys an example, right? I'm in the dark room, but as you can see the blue light back here, let's open up the blinds, see what this looks like. Oh, what is that? That is a beautiful day outside. Let's see if we can uh, maybe take a look over there. See if that adjusts. Anyway, that's the neighborhood. Those are the neighbors out there, you guys. Um, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, literally. Uh, wife's out running some errands. I'm waiting for her to get back. We're going to go for that hike. And then later on in the evening, I'm going to get back to editing um, or, you know, just doing any other stuff. But let that let the creativity flow but in order to let that creativity flow you got to take care of yourself and also other creatives out there too i mean you know reminder of the creatives that you know it's not all doom and gloom uh yes you got to follow the guidelines that are i mean if you want to be smart then follow the guidelines um don't be one of those spring breakers you know or everyone's rubbing up on each other and ignoring the guidelines um you know remind your fellow creatives 
right now is a great time to look at all of the positives that could come out of self-isolation and letting the creativity flow but it comes from first and foremost is your health you have nothing if you don't have your health if you don't have your health you can't do anything else so take care of yourselves you guys um i hope you guys enjoyed that first part of the video i'm gonna try to do a little bit more of that just to kind of bring those aspects of the day job and how to to give light to specifically to the following to those technical and thematic aspects and how those cross over into my um, filmmaking life and all the lessons contained therein in the journalism life how those cross over again thematically or technically how they cross over and how they have served me in the filmmaking world because i can tell you being a photojournalist has been a great training ground it has been that film school that i was not able to go to that'll be another um topic another video i guess because you know like whether or not i, sh I should go to film school like that's a very big one i understand that and i have my own story with regards to um that topic but so yeah i hope you guys enjoy that and uh, just that I love you guys. Talk to you guys later and uh, run out there, do your thing, tell your stories and don't ask for anyone's blessing, anyone's permission. If you have a higher power, consult your higher power. And if not, again, do your thing, tell your stories. If you haven't done so, please hit that subscribe button. I would love it. I'll talk to you guys later. Adios. Bye.